Hello and welcome to today's video on Identity Manager API customization. Today we're going to look at the Swagger, also known as OpenAPI interface, the development and testing website that you can use to directly communicate with the API through a web interface. To access the Swagger website, you have to log in to the Identity Manager's administration portal, which you can see here. To log into the administration portal, you can use any system user. Once we've logged in to the administration portal, on the left-hand side, you can reach the API documentation site. In this section, you will find every API endpoint that is exposed by the API server. Now to do anything with any of these API endpoints, the first step is to authenticate. Remember that the API is organized into API projects. Now, you will be most familiar with the Portal API project, so let's log in to the Portal API project. Let's search for the Login API to the Portal project. Now, as you can see here, there are separate API endpoints for every authentication module in Identity Manager. So let's use the one to log in as a role-based identity. Now, here's the API endpoint. Let's say, try it out. And to use this uh, login API endpoint, we have to provide a username and a password. Okay, this is my uh, JSON object to provide a username and a password. Now, in my case, the password is empty, but it still needs to be there. So let's say uh, execute. And now, as you can see, we received an HTTP 200 response, so the call was successful. And in the response, I can see some information about my identity, my UID in the system, my authentication time, and so on. Now, what would my API response look like if the authentication was not successful? Now, in this case, let's, let's simulate this by just um, taking a username that does not exist in the system, And if we execute this call, we will get an error response back. Now, my HTTP status code is 403, uh, which corresponds to a failed authentication. And in the response body, I can see that uh, the system detected a wrong username or password. Okay, so assuming that we are now correctly authenticated to the Portal API project, we can use the OpenAPI uh, open site to access all of the APIs in that project. Now let's take a very simple example. Let's just pull some information about identities. There is an API endpoint called Portal Person All, which is used to display the information in the address book in the, in the portal. Let's try out this one. It doesn't take any parameters, so it's very easy to take in as an example. As you can see here, there's various API parameters that you will see in lots of different endpoints. Parameters for sorting and pagination, um, parameters to filter my response. All of that is documented in the API development guide. Okay, so let's say try it out once again. Now, let's say execute. Now we got a response back, um, a successful response with some information about identities. Now the API is organized into API projects, but as you can see here, the portal API is also quite complex with different areas for delegation, IT shop, attestation, and so on. Uh, there's one way to find out which API endpoint the application uses to read and write data for a specific um, area of the portal, and that is to use the network tab of your web browser. If you are on a page in the portal, for example, here I've pulled up the, the address book, you can press F12 in your browser and go to the network tab of the browser development tools. And what you will see here is that the client is pulling data from various sources, but one of them is the um, 
Portal Person All API endpoint. And here on the right hand side in the response, we can see data that is similar to what we just saw early on um, on the Open API documentation page. So here in the uh, list of the requests or up here in the um, header section of the uh, developer tool, you can see exactly what URL was called and part of it is the API endpoint. Here we are with the portal personal endpoint. Okay, now let's look at what is needed to make a data change by calling an API. Now to do this, um, we're going to walk through the steps of first pulling up the and identifying the entity that we want to change from a list, then loading that entity as a single object, and then, pro then submitting a change request. Let's look at the results of the portal person master data endpoint, which returns the entities for the authenticated identity. In the result, you will see that there's one entity and we will need the primary key, the key of this entity. Let's copy that to the clipboard. And for the purpose of this example, let's just take any one of the custom property properties and change one of them. To make an API request to change data, we will need a put endpoint. So corresponding to the get endpoint, there's a corresponding put endpoint with the slash interactive suffix. So let's say try it out. And now the open API end, uh, page provides a template that we can fill out with the key of the entity, the name of the property and the value that we want to set. This is the key that I just copied to the clipboard in the step before. Now in this example, we don't need to provide the old value. We can just uh, remove that property. And the same goes for the state entity ID and reset column names property. We don't need them for this uh, demonstration, so we can remove them. In the next step, let's pull up an interactive entity um, of the identity object. To do that, we need to call the get portal person master data interactive uh, API endpoint with the primary key of the identity as a parameter. So let's paste the UID. Let's first say, try it out. Then paste the identity key here. Now we'll need to copy a few things from the response of this get request. Some additional information about the interactive entity that is kept in the memory uh, of the API server process. Let's copy the state and the entity ID uh, values of this response. Now we'll make a change request and to do this we use the put endpoint of portal person master data interactive. Um, let's say try it out. And now the open API page provides a template with some properties to fill out. So let's use the values for state entity ID and keys that we got from the uh, previous response. Now we don't need the reset column names um, properties, so let's remove that.
Now, in the data object, um, we can specify which properties we want to change and supply new values. So let's just set the custom property one property to something, to a new value. And we don't need to provide the old value. This is optional and we can remove it. Now, once we have all the information together for our request, we can execute it. And in the response, we can see that the request was successful. And if we scroll down to the custom property one, we can see that the server accepted uh, the change request and we've now changed the value. In this next section, let's, let's look at Postman. Postman is a tool that you can use to communicate with an API, much in the same way as we just saw with the OpenAPI web page. Now, the one advantage of Postman, for example, is that it's easier to create a collection of API requests ready to be uh, submitted and tested. On the installation set of Identity Manager, you will find a small collection of example requests that you can import into Postman. Once you import this collection into Postman, this is what it will look like. We just have to modify a setting, uh, set the variable for the API server URL to whatever URL um, you will be uh, running your API server at. Now let's look at what a very simple uh, login request in this collection will look like. So we are, we're making a post request to the uh, API server, which is here identified by the URL variable. And then we say IMX login, for example, API samples, but we could also use the portal uh, API project. Now let's make a very simple login request to the Portal API project. A login request is a post and the URL contains the uh, URL variable which points to our API server. And in the payload of the request, we provide a JSON containing uh, the name of the authentication module, the username and the password. And if we say send, we see in the response that the request was successful and that we've logged in. Now let's try the same thing again. The uh, flow to first load an entity and then change a property of the entity in a second request. Now we load the interactive entity for the identity object for the logged in user. From the response, let's copy the state in the entity ID. And then use a put request to the portal person master data interactive endpoint. Using the uh, state and entity ID parameters. And let's now set the custom property one value to something else just for a test. Now sending it, we can see that the response here is okay. And if we scroll down, we see that the uh, custom property one value is now different.